How are you doing everybody? Welcome back to another part of learning OpenCV from scratch and in this part 4 we are going to pre-process our images. Uh, quickly I just want to address you that if you want to move further to deep learning part then image, process, image pre-processing is really important to learn because it is going to help you a lot if you, if you have a lot of images and you want to apply pre-processing all the, or to all the images and at once. So it is going to save you a lot of time when you will be doing convolution neural networks to be specific if I talk about. So let's start this part without wasting more time. Over here I have a little code CV2 template. Uh, you might be really comfortable with this template or this code snippet if you are following, following me in the previous three parts. So if I run this code, uh, it just shows me this image which I have over, right over here. But for now I'm going to work with this image. So let's change this image to image.jpg. So if I now run this code, it will going to show me this image. So I will going to talk about a couple of functions. So let's, let's start this video by first talking about how to convert color map of the image. So if you uh, know that OpenCV reads the image in BGR format, so let's first see how to convert our BGR image to grayscale. So the first method you can do is when you are using imread, you can specify like uh, add another argument and set it as zero. When you do this, it will going to read the image in grayscale format as you can see over here. And the, another way you can do obviously is by using CVT color function. You can say CV plot CVT capital C O L O R and passing in this IMG and then giving the color code. In this case, it should be capital in all caps lock color underscore BGR2 GRAY gray. So now if I run this, then also it should be in grayscale. Now there, there are uh, a lot of color codes. Like if you want to convert BGR to RGB, it's, it's BGR2 RGB. It's straightforward. Over here, you might find any color shift, but that's the way how OpenCV reads the image in BGR format. Another function is BGR to HSV. Uh, HSV is really getting popular nowadays, so you will have to use HSV in the further parts if I want to talk about right now. So HSV is really good color mapping and it looks like this. I just want to talk about in quickly. So that's how you can convert the color map of the image. Now let's see how to blur the image. Blurring the image is really, really, really easy. There are a lot of ways to blur the image and the best way I like is just saying cv2.blur and passing in this img and then giving the kernel size. And in this case, let's give 5,5. Now if I save this and run this code, you can see it is blurred image. Now if you want less blur, you can reduce this value. Now you can say it's slightly blur blurred. Another way you can use to blur the image is by using Gaussian blur with capital G U G A U double S I A N capital B blur and passing in this IMG and then again giving the kernel size let's say 5,5 and then sigma x value and sigma y is taken automatically or you can specify it by over here. So let's save this and run this. How does it look like? This is also blurred. So all of these functions do the same, same thing but all of their working is a bit different. So you can use whatever you want. Uh, my particular choice would be by using simply blur function. And now I want to talk about thresholding the image. Uh, thresholding or you can say binarizing the image with just having two colors, either zero or one, either black or white. So first of all, you have to convert the image to grayscale. So let's say uh, I will convert my image by using CVT color function. So now my image is in grayscale as you can. Okay, so we got oh, G R A Y. So now if I run this, you can see it's a grayscale image. So now if I want to apply a threshold function, it will be something like this. It will going to output an image, let's say IMG and the function we are going to use is threshold. So threshold, it takes a certain arguments. First is obviously image on which you want to apply. And in this case, it's this gray image. And the another parameter is the lower value and the maximum value. I will talk about in a bit about them. And the another argument is the threshold code. And in this case, it should be thresh underscore binary. So if you use binary, it will going to only give out only two values, either zero or one. So if we save this and try to run this, you can see it's something like this. And now where the, and now where the part comes of these two values. So if I just change 25 to 50, it will be something like this. Now uh, I want to talk about uh, this code function. So if you can see it's currently thresh underscore binary and another you can apply is thresh underscore binary underscore INV meaning inverse. So if I save this and try to run this, now you can see the, the colors are inverse, obviously as the name suggests. So let's try changing this value. So these are the values which you have to work with if you want better results. So now it has a uh, different results. So it means uh, the values below 50 set them to zero or one depending on the code we use and above above 50 set them to zero or one depending on the code you use. That, that is the threshold function. 
Okay, so now I want to talk about a function which is erode function. So for that purpose, I'm going to use this image. Let's just quickly change this to img2 image, save this and run this. We got an error. So it's png, not jpg. Let's save this, run this. So it's this image. Now let's apply erode function to it and then I will talk about what erode function does do. So for that, you also have to import numpy. In a bit, you will come to know why do we need numpy. Okay, so uh, this is this will also going to return our image. Let's say this is img. You can name it any, whatever you want. It's all your preference. So the function which is, we are going to use is save to dot erode. It's to the point erode. Okay, so the first parameter is image on which you want to apply. And the second parameter is the kernel size. So I will just tell you, let's just first write this np dot once and the kernel size, let's use 5 comma 5. Okay, so let's save this and run this. So now you can see it's a bit eroded. So let's do one thing. Let's change this to img2 and show both of the images to the user. In the window, it will be original or you know what? Let's say original and eroded image img2. Let's save this and now run this. So now there are two images. One is original and eroded. Okay, so if you don't find any difference, don't worry. Let me just introduce you with another argument, which is iterations. Iterations. In this case, let's apply two iterations to it and see what, how that, how does the difference looks like. So you can see it's bit eroded around the boundaries. So uh, original image is, you can say bigger image and this image is smaller image. Let's have a, a more difference by applying more iterations to it. So as you can see, it's more eroded this time. So you are going to use this a lot when you have to find out the boundaries of two, uh, two numbers or whatever, like it's really, really important. For now, you might think like it's a bit unuseful, but when you will come to deep learning part, you will going to use this a lot. All right. So this was all about erode. Now I just want to talk about quickly about cropping the image, how you can crop the image. So let's just change this back to image.png. All right. So now I'm going to talk about how you can crop the image. I'm going to use paint for that purpose. Let's say I want to crop this part of the dog. So we are going to slicing for that purpose. So first of all, you need a uh, y values okay so y values of this coordinate let me just change this to brush and red color so y value of this coordinate and y value of this coordinate so in this case y value is 80 and over here y value is 220 so let's come to sublime and say img is equals to img and giving this square braces square brackets and for what's that oh my god i am very bad at remembering the words so it's 80 comma 220 so let's say 80 and giving a colon and then 220 and then giving a comma and now next two values you want is x value let me just change this color so x value from this coordinate and x value from this coordinate so in this case it's 210 comma 410 so let's go back to sublime 210 colon 410 let's save this and if i run this now you can see we have a cropped image of the dog okay so this was it for this part i I hope you should have learned today something new. So if you learned something new today, make sure you thank me my, by giving a big thumb up to this video and giving a subscribe to my channel. So this is it. With this said, I would like to stop the video right here and I will see you in the next.